Have a seat up on a lift, cross your legs at the center of your shins, take your feet underneath your knees. Have a high enough lift so that you can find some ease. And see if you can begin adjusting to increase the ease and stability in the pose. So you wanna make sure your shoulders are over your hips, that you're not leaning forward, not leaning back. You wanna ensure that the, the thighs descend down. So there's a, a lengthening from the inner thighs through the inner knees. And there's also a lengthening from the upper inner thighs back towards the lower abdomen. So that whole groin from the inner knee to the, to the lower abdomen is lengthening. Of course, do balance evenly on the sit bones while maintaining that lengthening opening of the groins, the inner thighs. The flesh of the inner thighs descends down. And while maintaining the lengthening and releasing of the inner thighs, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips and compact the hips together. And if you work too hard, you lose the ease. So don't think about, well, how much can I squeeze? Although, do squeeze, compact those hips. And don't think about, you know, how long can I stretch and pull apart? Think about opening instead. And can you combine these actions so that there is both a sturdiness and an ease? And of course, ease is different for each of us on any given day. And maybe we don't get to true ease, but maybe slightly more ease than was before, depending what kind of pains, physical and emotional we're dealing with. And if there is physical or emotional distress, discomfort, Think about creating a safe container so that it can safely be here with you without struggling, without fighting, and instead nurturing, helping. Maintaining this seat this base that you've created lengthen from the hips up through the armpits so the side ribs sides of the torso lengthening the abdomen gently draws towards the spine top of the buttocks moves away from the shoulders and don't confuse that with the pelvic tilt you're not it's, it's not such a strong action just creating a little bit more length in the spine. It's not about taking away the natural curves. It's about creating a little bit more length. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Allow the shoulders to drop away from the sides of the neck. And lengthen from your inner armpits to your inner elbows. And then take a moment to double check the legs again. Are you still compacting the hips? Are you still releasing the inner thighs? Check in with the breath. Has it changed since we first sat down together? Become a witness for the breath. Keep the elbows where they are, bring the palms together, thumbs at your chest, touch the palms evenly left to right, right to left. You don't need to press hard, 
sometimes we say we're touching and not touching at the same time. So gently, left palm touching the right, right palm touching the left, equal pressure. Broaden across the chest, the front body broaden equally across the top of the back. Facial features completely released and relax as you rest your eyeballs into your cheekbones, gazing at your heart. Becoming a witness for the body, a witness for the breath, a witness for the mind. While we will be engaged in a series of doings, move this, move that, as we go about our yoga practice, The main role we have is the one of witnessing. So can you take on that role of the witnesser, the seer? And as we move forward chanting three ohms together, as you chant them, as you do, can you also witness yourself chanting? Taking a step back in your mind's eye and watching this person, you, who is chanting. Exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Oh. Checking in on the body, the breath, the mind. Keep the sternum lifted as you lower your chin towards your heart. Again, observing, continuing. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. Your eyes close, raise your head. In the back of your head, gently let your eyelids open. Again, before we race to move to whatever is next, and even the, so the mind starts to wonder well, what's next, just pause here. You are in a different state than when you first logged in. When you first sat down, so can you become a witness here, checking in on the body, seeking to do it without judgment, just noticing the current experience, current experience of the breath as it breathes you, as it flows through you, and in and out. Just noticing the quality of the mind, again, without judgment. Maybe the thoughts are racing like crazy. Maybe they're a little calmer than they were before. There's not a right and wrong. but it's important that we pause to notice. And 
and release. Straighten your legs. Back a little bit. <clears throat> so come to the uh, edge of your lift. The buttocks are on the lift, thighs are off of the lift. Hands by your hips with your elbows bent. Elbows bent moving back, but not jamming towards each other. So the, the upper arms are parallel to each other. And balance evenly on the sits bones. And even that takes an adjustment. See that your shoulders are above your hips, that you're not leaning forward, not leaning back. Press the thigh bones down. Don't get that confused with the knees, but take the tops of the thighs. If you need to feel the sensation, you can take your hands. Sometimes I do. I take my thumbs at the very top of the thighs and I begin to press down and I leave an imprint there. And then I can move my hands, but I remember the imprint. I imagine the hands are still there as I take the hands back to my sides and I still press down at the tops of the thighs. And if you really establish that, then yes, move to the center of the thighs. But resist just forcing the knees down, especially when they're raised like this. Lengthen from the upper inner thighs through the inner knee, through the inner heel. Lengthen from the upper inner thighs also to the lower abdomen. So there's a lengthening out in both directions. The flesh of the inner thighs descends down and draw from your outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. And can you notice how those actions of the legs affect the breath? Can you notice how the actions of the legs affect the torso? What's happening in the torso? Now keep that, those legs working and gently press into the hands, begin to straighten the arms. I don't care if they get completely straight. Don't lift the shoulders up, but see if you can create more length through the side ribs without just forcing the front bottom ribs forward. But instead take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Find a stillness through the face, through the skull. Become a witness. Separate your legs. If you've taken them as far apart as you can, Take them a little closer together. Ensure that the kneecaps and toes point up. And then the actions are the same from the upper inner thighs out through the inner knee, out through the inner heel, also pushing through the ball of the big toe. The flesh of the inner thigh is descending and draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Can you compact the hips in such a way that you, you don't overtake the inner thighs so that you're still lengthening the inner, inner thighs? If you, if you just grip, 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 you, you may end up gripping the inner thighs as well. So you have to compact the outer hips, but still open in the inner thighs. And then keeping the front bottom ribs into the body, gently press with the hands. The arms may become straight, but they may not. Don't just lift the shoulders up into the air, ears. We're looking for lengthening of the side ribs, not just straight arms. And the arms are assisting us in lengthening those side ribs. And become a witness, examine the body. The breath the mind. As you're doing, can you still be a witness? 
as you witness, can you still maintain the actions? Take hold of the inside of your knees, pull to come up, to take the knees up, take your feet together, the bottoms of the feet. I should have said, if you don't have a strap, uh, that's fine. I should have said, have, have a strap or scarf nearby. I, I didn't go over props at the beginning. Um, you know, don't leave now, but when we get up, make sure you have a chair nearby, any kind of chair, dining room chair is fine. Uh, a block or some books that will give you a lift. And, and if you don't have a strap, that's fine. Um, but you can have a, a strap or a scarf or belt or something like that. If, if you didn't get one, just take your hands by your hips and we'll do the same thing. And if you do have something nearby, then you slide that underneath your feet and you'll hold down here with your arms straight. So reach down, don't, not, don't do this one here. Not with the, the bent elbows, but reach down. You don't have to lock your elbows, but so that the arms are straighter. Because what you can do then is as you rotate the upper arms out, there's more space for your side ribs. But do start with the base, balance evenly on the sit bones. Press the heels. Lengthen from the inner thighs out through the inner knees. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs from the front of the leg towards the back of the leg. And draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen up through the side ribs as you push the sit bones down evenly, right? Notice as you push the sit bones down, one often goes more or more quickly or harder than the other. So evenly lift up through the side ribs, but resist just pushing the front bottom ribs forward. Draw the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Chin parallel to the floor. And then witness, witness the body, witness the breath, witness the mind. Can you witness as you maintain the actions? Can you maintain the actions as you witness? And by the way, those are two different things. And release, take your hands on the outside of your knees, push your legs together, hold behind one knee. There are two strands there. Take one in each hand, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg. Other leg, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg. Hands by your hips, Dandasana. Press the tops of the thighs down. Lengthen the inner thighs. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs. Draw from the outer knees to the outer hips. Without pushing the front bottom ribs forward, begin to straighten the arms, whether they become straight or not. Not is irrelevant. We're looking for a lengthening of the side ribs. And release. Come up to standing. So put your strap to the side. Put your lift to the side. And come up to standing. Feet together into Dasana. If feet uh, hip distance apart is, is more comfortable, accessible to you, that's fine. Balance evenly on the two feet.
Press the thigh bones back. Again, the top of the thighs. It, it's ultimately the center of the thighs too, but so many of us just, just jam those knees back. So I want you to experience the tops of the thigh bones moving back. And if, if you really have that, then yes, go, go to the center thighs, femur bones moving towards the hamstrings. There's a lengthening of the inner groin. So from the knee, inner knees, lengthen all the way up to the lower abdomen. You can even feel that reflect up into the, the chest. Take the flesh of the inner thigh straight back, lift from the outer knees to the outer hips and compact the hips together. So same actions. Now we're standing. You don't have your arms to help you, but you, know, you can imagine, you take your, your, your hands by your hips, imagine there's a surface there. Imagine that you're pressing down and lift up through the side ribs without pushing the front ribs forward. It's amazing what the mind can do, what the imagination can do. And then when you have that, then take the hand straight again, back to Tadasana. Let the shoulders release away from your ears, away from the sides of your neck. There's a broadening across the chest, but also a broadening across the top of the back. Face soft, still. Can you be a witness? A witness for the body, a witness for the breath, a witness for the mind. Take your arms out to the sides. Drop your shoulders down. Hold your arms up from your armpits, not your shoulders. Notice how as soon as the arms come up, the front bottom ribs uh, begin to push forward. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Still working the legs, balance evenly on the feet. Thighs back, lengthen the inner thighs. Outer knees to outer hips. And then from the armpits, begin to rotate the arms up. The actions from the armpits. You go as far as you can with the armpits. At some point, they can't turn anymore, so then you go after the wrists, turn the palms up. But keep the front bottom ribs moving towards the back body. From the center of the sternum, extend outward. From between the shoulder blades, extend outward. And then don't just take the hands up, but from the armpits, push the arms up. The hands will obviously go, but the actions from the armpits. Push down to the feet, lengthen up through the side ribs, and from your side ribs, push your arms up. Urdhva Hastasana, upward arms. Turn your hands out to the sides, exhale, come down. Interlace your fingers together. Take your right first finger on top. Gently touch the thumbs together. Turn the palms out. Now don't just push through where the knuckles meet, but keep the palms in one straight line. Extend out through the wrists, not the fingers. Watch those front ribs. Take the front ribs to the back body. Push through the feet. Inhale, take the arms up. Upper arms in line with your ears, or as best you can. If, if you can't keep your arms straight while the palms are up, then, then you, you just turn the palms down. So palms up, palms down. So if you can't straighten the elbows with, with the palms up, you just turn the palms down, that's fine. And you keep working that and one day the arms will come straight and then you can play with turning the, turning the palms up. Again, press through the feet, thigh bones back, that lengthening of the inner groins, outer knees to outer hips, and then as you lengthen to the side ribs, use the side ribs to push those arms up. As the wrists move up, the shoulders move down. And release your arms out to the sides, come down. Interlace your fingers together, left first finger on top, thumbs gently touching. Now take the hands to the back of your head. So slightly different. We'll go in slightly differently. 
So palms up, or again, if, if, if you had difficulty straightening your elbows, then you can take palms down. Elbows out to the sides. So not forward, but you don't have to just crank them back either. Out to the side so the elbows are moving away from each other. Take your front bottom ribs towards the back body. Push through the feet. Get the legs. So thigh bones back, lengthen the inner groins, outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips. Establish that. Lengthen through the side ribs. And then keeping your elbows out to the sides, begin to push the wrists up towards the ceiling. Obviously, the elbows will come towards each other. From your side ribs, extend up through the wrists. Push through the feet, push through the wrists. Become longer. Become a witness for the body, the breath, and the mind. Release your arms out to the sides, come down. Mutita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Take your fingertips up by your chest, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Take a wide stance with your feet below your hands as your arms are extended. Drop your shoulders, balance evenly on your feet. Still lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, still lengthening from the inner knees up to the abdomen. The flesh of the inner thighs moving back, lifting up through the side ribs. So we're in a different form, but many of the actions are the same. Drop the shoulders and extend through the arms. Now turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Press the outer rim of the back heel down. Turn the front thigh from the inside out so your knee is in line with the top of the foot. And lift both outer knees to outer hips and compact the hips together. Now maintain that experience of the legs, press the back heel, inhale, and on your exhalation, take your right hand down, left arm up. Keep pressing the back heel, keep turning that front thigh out, and lift both outer knees to outer hips, really compact those hips together. Torso rotates towards the ceiling. You can either look forward or look up, depending on the experience of your torso, which affects the head and then your neck itself. Observe. Press into the back heel, pull with your arm, come up and out, parallel your feet, over to the other, other side, right foot in, left leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch. Press the outer rim of the back heel. Turn the front thigh from the inside out. Lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. Now keep pressing that back heel. Inhale, exhale, come down. Press the back heel, go after the legs again. Press the back heel, turn that front thigh out. Lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact those hips together. Rotate the torso towards the ceiling. Eyes looking forward or up. Extend those arms away from each other. And observe body, breath, mind. Become a witness. Can you maintain the doing as you witness? Can you maintain the witness as you do the actions? Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet and jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Checking in with yourself. One more time. Bring your tips up, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. So take your hands on your hips for a moment. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. So as soon as we begin that action once we turn the left foot in what often happens is this back thigh falls forward and as then the front thigh turns out and the torso begins to turn so you still want your torso to be parallel to the front and back walls so take this back thigh back now from your hip you can press into the back heel your torso is also now more squared to the front and back room of course the front thigh ended up turning in 
at least for me. So now can you maintain that and turn the front thigh up? So there's actually an opening here in the pelvic area, an opening in the hips. So instead of just everything turning together, we're creating an, an opening. So the back thigh goes back and the front thigh goes up. And at the beginning, the beginners, you often do them really separately. Take the back thigh back, turn the front thigh out. But can you begin to make the, that one action where as the back thigh goes back, the front thigh turns out? So that the mind actually is going to both legs at the same time. And as you press the back heel, there's also, there is a pressing of the ball of the big toe. And then on both legs, there's a lifting of the outer knees to the outer hip. So instead of always working one leg at a time, we begin to, to unite them. And if they're not uniting, then you continue one leg at a time. Back thigh back, press the back heel. Front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. That's okay. But can you have the experience, for those of you that are practicing longer, that these actions of the two legs work together? Extend the arms, inhale, exhale, come down. Take your left hand on your hip. And then again, we go after the legs again because as we come down, there's, there's also again this, this um, habit or unconscious thing that happens where that back thigh falls forward. So left hand is on the hip now. Take that back thigh back, turn the front thigh out. And then can you do them at the same time? As you turn the back thigh back, turn the front thigh out. As you press the back heel, press the ball of the big toe. And then lift both outer knees to outer hips. And from here, rotate the torso. Maybe the head begins to look up, although don't force that. And then extend the arm up. Finish the pose, become the witness. And pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Take your hands on your hips. Right foot in, left leg out. So again, first notice. Don't, don't just go immediately to, to adjusting before you notice. So did your back thigh fall forward when you turned your back foot in? Did your torso begin to turn? So adjust. Adjust from the legs first. It's, you, you can turn your torso, but then you're just clogging this area up. So take that back thigh back. Then the torso turns on its own. Turn the front thigh out so there's an opening. And then can you do them at the same time? Can you spread the awareness of your mind to the two legs equally? And from here, pressing the back heel, pressing the ball of the big toe, and then lifting from the outer knees to the outer hips, compacting the hips together. And notice how for some of us, it, it's still come and go. Okay, I got it, oh, it's gone. I got it, oh, it's gone. That's natural. You lose it, go after it again. Don't beat yourself up for losing it. Celebrate that you actually got it. Now extend your arms. Notice if you lost the legs when you just moved your arms. Inhale, exhale, come down. Right hand on your hip. As you take that back thigh back, turn the front thigh out at the same time. As you press the back heel, press the ball of the big toe. Lift both outer knees to outer hips. Compact both hips together. Now keep that awareness of the legs. Begin to rotate the torso. Maybe the head turns. And then extend the arm up. Finish the pose. Become the witness. Pull yourself up and out, parallel your feet, and jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Take a block on the sides of, of your mat. We'll set up for Utita Parjo Konasana, extended side angle pose. If you don't have a block, see if you have uh, some big books. And if not, you're still okay. You can always take your forearm on your thigh. And of course, if you have one block, you'll just move them, take them on, take them on the right side of your mat. And then when you go to the left, you can move the block to the other side.
All right, from Tadasana, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart, drop your shoulders, extend your arms. Start here, balance evenly on the feet, thighs back, lengthen the groins, outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips. Left foot in, right leg out. Front heel in line with, with your back arch. Now, if you have a block, if you have a lift, move that right next to your heel and come back up. Now press that back heel, turn the front thigh out, inhale, exhale, bend the leg, knee in a 90 degree angle, take your right hand onto the block. If you don't have a block, then your forearm goes on your thigh, totally fine. Otherwise take a block or you can even have your hand on the chair and have a higher lift, that's fine too. Extend the arm up. Now rotate the arm so the palm faces your ear, press the back heel and extend your arm over your ear. Extend through that whole left side of your body. From the heel to the fingertips, from the fingertips to the heel. Press into the back heel, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, over to the other side. Right foot in, left leg out. Take that block, either move it from the other side or if you have two, take the block. Put it next to your foot, press the back heel, turn the front thigh, inhale, exhale, bend the leg. Keep pressing the back heel as you bend that front leg to a 90 degree angle. Then take your hand on the block, take your right arm up, rotate it, keep pressing into the heel, reach up and extend your arm over your ear. in that whole right side of the body from the heel to the fingertips from the fingertips to the heel and reach through the arm pull yourself up and out parallel your feet jump or step your feet together check in are you balanced evenly on your feet when you come back to tadasana you're not between poses. Can you really come back to a Tadasana? Balance evenly on the feet. Thigh bones back, lengthen the groins. The flesh of the inner thighs moving back. The outer knees drawn to the outer hips, compacting. Lift up through the side. Find a softness in the face, the skull. The brain within the skull. Instead of having the brain push against the bones of the skull, can you have the brain withdraw from the bones of the skull? Find a softness. One more time, watch, watch the blocks. Don't, don't uh, trip on your blocks. Fingertips up, you can jump or step. Bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Turn your left foot in, turn your right, everyone take your hands on your hips. Left foot in, right leg out. So the same thing happens here, right? When we turn, that back thigh turns in, the torso turns. So take the back thigh back, torso turns with it, press the back heel, and turn the front thigh out. Unite those actions. Now press the back heel, bend the front leg. Keep equal awareness on the back leg and the front leg. And lift the spine. So there's this open, the back thigh goes back, keep your knee in line with your hip, the, the right buttock comes forward. So there's this opening spreading in the pelvic area. Now extend the arms, inhale, exhale, take the right hand down, move that next to the block, take your left hand on your hip once again. So left thigh back, press into the back heel. The right buttock comes forward, so there's an opening in the pelvic area. When the right but, but, the buttock comes forward, there's also a rotation of the torso. Maybe your head begins to look more towards the ceiling. Now extend the arm up, rotate it, and extend over your ear, your, your ear and gaze into your armpit. Press into that back heel, reach through the fingertips, reach, reach through the fingertips, and extend through that back heel. Observe body, breath, mind. 
And reach through your arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Block out of your way if it's in your way. Hands on hips. Right foot in, left leg out. Immediately adjust, take that back thigh back. As you turn the front thigh out, get that opening. Get that awareness of both legs working, of that spreading in the, in the pelvic area and the abdominal area. Now keep your awareness on your back leg, on your exhalation, bend the front leg. Hands on your hips. So the back thigh moves back. The right buttock, I'm sorry, left buttock moves forward. So again, there's this opening, the pelvic area, it even rises up into the abdominal area. Extend the arms. Inhale, exhale, hand on the block, move the block to the foot. Take your right hand on your head. Legs again, back thigh back, right buttock forward. Again, can you unite those actions? You're still drawing the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Rotate the torso. Then extend the arm up, rotate the arm, press the back heel as you extend your arm over your ear. Extend from your heel through your fingertips, reach through your fingertips and extend back through your heel. It's a two-way street. And then become the witness, observe. And reach through your arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet and jumper step your feet together. Tadasana. Check in. Body, breath, mind. Not what you want it to be, but what it is right now. And release. Take your chair onto your mat. Parjvottanasana, side forward bend. Take your right foot forward. So your right, I'm not mirroring now. So my right foot, your right foot. Right foot forward. Take your left foot back, but try and keep your hips squared. So not this one where you're turn to the side, but the, those hips are squared and take your hands on, on the chair. Now, I actually set up a little too close to the chair. So see how my shoulders are close to over my wrists? I want you to walk back so that your arms and torso are close to a straight line. I know I'm not a full straight line, there, there's an angle here, but so you're, you're not way up here. There's this extension through the arms, the armpits, and the side ribs. If that doesn't make sense, then you know, un unmute yourself and let me know so I can take a look and walk you through it. The front thigh turns out, the back thigh turns in. As you turn that front thigh out, still press the ball of the front big toe and lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. Now forward bends are much easier if you can lengthen those groins. So lengthen from the inner knees up through the lower abdomen. The flesh of the inner thigh is moving back. Compact the hips together while maintaining that releasing of the inner groins. And then crawl your hands forward. Don't let the hips go with them. The hips go back. Crawl the hands forward to see if you can lengthen through the side ribs and armpits. Now, you want to keep the, the feet, actually walk your hands back to where they were because we're going to switch sides. Uh, you want to keep your feet the same distance apart. So see where your heel is, see where your front foot is and switch legs, bend the front leg, and then switch legs. Again, keeping the hips squared. <clears throat> so the front thigh turns out, the back thigh turns in. As you turn that front thigh out, press the ball of the front big toe, 
You're seeking and pressing of the back heel. It can be elusive in this pose. Go after it anyway. Lengthen the groins from the inner knees up through the lower abdomen, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back, and compact the hips together. I'm going to find a lengthening through the side ribs and armpits. And as you keep the hips exactly where they are, or maybe you're even moving them back slightly, crawl the hands forward. Get that extra length on the side ribs, the armpits. Of course, if the side ribs are lengthening, then there's a lengthening in the, lengthening in the spine. And then bend your front leg, walk your back foot to your front foot. Hands on hips, extend the chest forward, come up into Dasana. And one more time, hands down, walk that back foot back, straighten the front leg. It is front heel in line with the back arch. Turn the front thigh out, turn the back thigh in, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen those groins. From the inner knees to the lower abdomen, both legs, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back while you compact those hips together. And yes, that the ball of the front big toe is pressing. Now there's a tendency when we're here to drop, to sink in the front ribs. So take your front bottom ribs towards the back body. Push the hips back as you crawl the hands forward. Keeping the front bottom ribs towards the back body, lengthening through the side ribs and the armpits. There is a pressing of the ball of the first finger and thumb as you rotate the upper arms out. Similar to what we do in downward facing dog for those that have been with me in the other classes. Now keep that length. Now some of you, if you have very tight hamstrings, you know what, this is your pose. That's it. And that's fine. And if you've been practicing, or you have some length in the hamstrings, or you just want to experiment, take your hands down onto the floor and walk your hands forward. Don't try and get your head to your knee, but try and get your chest towards your big toe. Still lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Relax the head, but again, not seeking the knee. It's the chest seeking the big toe, front big toe. And of course, if this is a little too much, then you know you keep your hands on the chair. That's fine. Crawl your hands forward on the floor or on the chair. And then if your hands are on the floor, then take your hands underneath your shoulders. And fingertips are fine. <clears throat> Take your hands on the chair, everybody. Bend the front leg <clears throat> and switch sides. So establish the legs first. Don't, don't race to, to move forward in the pose. Turn the front thigh out, turn the back thigh in. Press the ball of the front big toe, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen the groins, inner knees to the lower abdomen, the flesh of the inner thigh is moving back. Now again, watch those front ribs. Are they sinking down? Bring the front bottom ribs towards the back body. Keep the hips where they are or pressing them back. Walk the hands forward. Get a little bit extra length in the side ribs and spine and the armpits. Watch those front ribs. Draw them back towards the body. And then either this is your pose or you can take your hands on the floor. Crawl your hands forward if they're on the floor. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips as you do that. The chest seeks the ball of the, excuse, excuse me, the chest seeks the big toe. Release the head. With each exhalation, the chest moves closer to the big toe.
And then if the hands are on the floor, you can take them underneath your shoulders, still outer knees to the outer hips. And everybody hands on the chair, lengthen, bend your front leg, walk your back foot in, hands on hips, extend the chest forward and come up into Tadasana. All right, let's do one more standing pose, Parvita Trikonasana. This time be, be a little closer to the chair. So right foot forward, left foot back, but your, your foot is underneath the chair and your hips are squared. Turn the front thigh out, turn the back thigh and lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together, lengthen the groins and take your torso towards the chair and then take your, your uh, left hand on the chair over where your foot is. And then readjust. Front thigh out, back thigh in. Outer knees to outer hips, compact those hips together. Do press the ball of the big toe. Lengthen the groins. The twist, forward bends. Really all poses, but forward bends. Easier if you lengthen the groins. And twist like this, easier if you lengthen the groin. So before you try and demand the turn, lengthen from the inner knees to the, ab the lower abdomen. Take the flesh of the inner thighs back. Now with your right hand on your right hip, Take that right hip back and extend the chest forward. And then turn, rotate. And if you have your balance here, you can extend your right arm up, that's fine. But not if you lose the leg, what's the purpose then? And if the arms are up, extend them away from each other. So you're pushing into the chair and you're extending up. And then take your hand on your hip, turn your torso towards the, the chair, take both hands on the chair, take your hands on your hips, inhale, come up. Bend your front leg, step your feet together and switch legs. Left foot forward, right leg back. Square those hips, turn the front thigh out, back thigh in, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. And start here with the lengthening of the groins. Right, we've been doing it all class. For those who've been practicing regularly with me, we've been doing it all for the past months, almost all year. Come down, come down. And then right hand on top of the chair above where the foot is. Turn the front thigh out, turn the back thigh in. Do press the ball of the front big toe, do press the back heel. Even though that one can be elusive, do it, do it anyway, go after it. Lengthen the inner groins, descend the flesh of the inner thighs. And then as you take that hand is on the hips, so take the left hip back, chest forward, lengthen the groins, begin the turn. Rotate. Don't just crank the shoulders around but turn at the abdomen to turn the shoulders. So start the base of the spine, move up. The abdomen turning to turn the shoulders. If you have your balance, certainly extend your arm up. Are you still lengthening in the groins? And coming out, hand on your hip, turn your torso to the floor, both hands on the chair, hands on your hips, inhale, come up, bend the front leg, step your feet together, Tadasana. Now, if you'd like, you, we're gonna do, we'll do the pose one more time. And staying on the chair is fine. This is where now you have to do the pose for your body, not my body, not the person's body who's in the screen next to you. Normally I'd say on the mat next to you. On the screen next to you, a little box on the screen. So, but, but maybe you want to block. You can have it tested out. 
So right foot forward. If, if you're using the block, you, you can't have your foot directly under the chair. So the foot will be a little in front of the chair and take your block on the outside of the chair and left foot back, square your hips. Front thigh up, back thigh in. Lift your outer knees, outer hips, compact the hips, lengthen the groins, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back. Now maintain all that, come down. You can take the hand on the chair so the hand will be a little forward, that's fine. Take that right thigh back, lengthen those groins. Release the groins, compact the hips. And then if you'd like, that hand goes all the way on the block. If that feels like you're completely losing the balance, then come back to the chair. Or take that block. Now, lengthen the groins, take that right hip still. Take that right hip back, extend the chest forward, and then turn. From the base of the spine moving up, and again, turn your abdomen to turn your shoulders. Don't just crank the shoulders around and wait for the, the abdomen to fall. Press the back heel, keep pressing the ball of the big toe as well. Lengthen the groins, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. If you have your balance, you're welcome to extend the arm up or keep it on your hip and observe your pose. Witness the body, breath, mind. Take your hand on your hip. Take your hand on the chair. Both hands on the chair. For that stability and support. Bend your front leg. Step your feet together and come up. Now listen, some of you are putting your arm up, but your torso is not turned. We'll do the other side, but if you don't have the twist, if, if, if you, your torso is here, raising the arm does nothing. There's nothing going on here. You have to get the torso turned and then you can extend the arm. If you're working this, that's fine. This is a hard pose to do, but don't worry about the arm before your torso is ready, okay? Walk on the other side, if you're using the block. Left foot forward, walk on the outside of your foot. Square those hips. Turn the front thigh out, turn the back thigh in. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen the inner groins, flesh of the inner thighs moving back. Start it here, and then come down with the torso. Right in on the chair. Get your stability, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Maybe you're taking your hand on the block, that's fine. That's too much, hand on the chair. Lengthen the groins, compact the hips. Now take that left hip back, extend the chest forward to get length in the spine, and then rotate. Rotate, worry about the turn. If you have the turn, yeah, you can extend your arm up. I'm not saying don't extend it. But if you're still working the turn, it's more important than the arm being up. Lengthen the groins, compact the hips. Turning at the abdomen to turn the, the shoulders, the chest. Head back. Witness. Observe. And everybody hand on hip. Hand on the chair. Both hands on the chair. And your front leg, step your feet together, come up into Tadasana. Check in with yourself, press to the feet, thighs back, lengthening the groins, lifting up to the side ribs, release the shoulders. How is life different now? How is this Tadasana different now? How is life in Tadasana different? the container of the breath, the mind. That's the quality of the body, the quality of the breath, the quality of the mind. And release. Take your chair, have it so that the back of the chair faces the front, have a seat in the chair, so that the right side of your body is facing 
uh, the what would be the back of the chair. Square your hip as best you can, depending on the type of chair you have, the, this things get in the way, but we do the best we can, right? So square the hips, square the knees, square the heel, lift up to the side ribs, a little close to the wall here, but extend your arms up at that length. Keep those front ribs in, and then you'll take your arms out to the sides. I, I didn't really set up with enough room here, but extend your arms out to the sides if you're not right up next to the wall. Inhale, exhale, take hold of the sides of the chair. Now lengthen the groins, descend the flesh of the inner thighs, elbows up, shoulders down. Remember the turn starts at the base, inhale lifting, exhale turning to the right. Inhale lifting, exhale turning, the pace of your breath, not mine. Inhale lifting, exhale turning, elbows up, shoulders down. Note the quality of the body, the breath, the mind, and the twist. And a supported twist, right? The uh, Parvita Trikonasana is obviously a twist, but there's a lot going on there. Sometimes it's hard to calm the mind in that pose, but here we are supported by the chair. Become a witness. Maintain the lift, inhale, exhale, come to center. Turn around. Square the hips, knees, heels. Lengthen the groins, descend the groins, arms forward, arms up. Watch those ribs. Inhale, exhale, take the arms down. Inhale, exhale, turn. Watch the ribs. Lengthen the groins, descend the groins, inhale, lifting up to the side ribs, exhale, turning, turning the torso, elbows up, shoulders down. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Inhale, lifting, exhale, turning. Witness. Maintain the lift. Inhale, maintain the lift. Exhale, come to center. And as long as we have the chair, downward facing dog, hands on the chair. Even things out, clear anything in the back. So hands on the chair, walk your feet back. Thighs back, lengthen the groins, compact the hips. Lengthen through the arms, armpits, side ribs. Watch sinking in the front ribs, the front ribs moving towards the back body. Seeking evenness on the legs, and evenness, even length in each of the side ribs, each of the sides of the body, and an evenness in the arm. Look up, walk your feet forward, hands on hips, come up to Dasana. And then release. Take a blanket for your head. <clears throat> so it can be a flat blanket. For most, a flat blanket is best, but some of us have some neck issues going on. You might need to fold it up in half, take something that works for you. Lie back with the blanket supporting your head and touching the tops of your shoulders so that it just touches your seventh cervical. Or not just, just touches your shoulders and supports your seventh cervical. Bend your legs into your chest, give yourself a hug here. Hug yourself like you really mean it, like you care. Say something kind to yourself. On your inhalation, take your feet to the floor. Without doing a pelvic tilt, 
Just take your hands underneath your buttocks and scoop that flesh towards your heels to lengthen the lower back. Drag one heel on the floor, straighten your leg, drag the other heel on the floor, straighten your leg, let your legs go. And then take your arms comfortably out to the sides. Let go. Let go. The doing is now over. The doing is now over. Lie back in your Shavasana. A complete letting go as you're lying back. Allow the Mother Earth to support you and take hold of you. The work here is in witnessing. The work here is to simply witness. We have been trained to do things. We've been trained to work harder with the idea that working harder means something will be better. And hard work is certainly important. but we have not been taught how to witness and things can't get better unless we witness, no matter how much hard work you do. So can you practice here now being the witness? The body, the breath as it breathes the body. You don't need to breathe, the breath will breathe you. And the mind. Seeking non-judgmental, friendly nature to the here and now, to this moment. Being a witness. Shavasana. Begin to deepen the inhalation, lengthen the exhalation.
wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor with your knees together, feet apart. Take your hands, place them onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands penetrate your body, pierce through your layers and heal. Whatever it is you may need healing with today. When you feel ready, extend your right arm past your right ear, roll to the right side. When you feel ready, place your left hand on the floor in front of your heart, turn your torso towards the floor first, then push to come up, come up chest first, head last, come up to sitting. Sit up on a lift that will give you a sense of ease or a chair is fine, the chair is there, bring your palms together. Take a moment to observe your practice. What's different? What's changed? Take a yoga practice with you out through the rest of your day with kindness and compassion. Kindness and compassion for others. Most importantly, kindness and compassion for yourself. And let's close our practice together by chanting one collective OM. Deep inhalation. OM. Then let your eyes open. Big smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you.